On the surface, it's a typical construction site. Diggers and bulldozers converting 100 homes and businesses near Highway 41A from septic to sewer. We have issues with pollution, uh, concerns with Race Creek. The Kentucky General Assembly approved the $2 million Finley Edition sewer project in 2008. Judge Executive Hugh McCormick says at the time, Henderson County could afford it. That based on expected tax revenue from future coal production. But a lot's changed in seven years. Today, the project, 200 grand short. Was Henderson County not prepared? I started four years ago, ma'am, telling people that, that, that this was coming, that we was going to start going down. And I think our court records will show every year at budget time. I said, now our co severance dollars are going down. But, but to go to zero, did you think that would happen? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Did not have a clue. These new sewer lines, a symbol of sorts of the stress caused by stagnant coal mines. A much needed upgrade offset by funneling funds from other approved projects, like a boardwalk to make Audubon State Park more handicapped accessible. This county can never, ever depend on coal money again. Henderson County doesn't have a single mine producing coal anymore. State records show there were three just three years ago. Go back five years and Western Kentucky's top coal producing counties had a combined 28 mines up and running. Today, there are 15. And when the mines left, so did the jobs. 900 jobs cut for the 400 created. The six county area's mining workforce shrunk 12%. Coal mining as a whole uh, uses fear tactics to keep their miners in check. You know, if you don't do this, we'll shut it down. If you don't do this, it's going to shut down. Got to get production, production, production. The decline of coal production has uh, dramatically uh, decreased from a high of about 3.3 million tons of coal in our county down to zero. Uh, and the coal severance money uh, that's tied to that to be able to do infrastructure uh, improvements within your county has basically went to zero. Former Governor Wendell Ford created the coal severance tax in 1972, eliminating the tax on food and medicine. Today, each ton of coal is taxed a dollar. The state siphons off the top, then it's whittled down through a complicated formula before ending up in county coffers. Coal producing counties are required to spend 30% of what's left on mine related public infrastructure, like this access road Henderson County built leading to the Highland Mine in Waverly. A road rarely traveled now as Patriot Coal shut down the mine at the end of last year. It was a real good mine. Um, it was a real good place to work for uh, up until about the last two years when they first went into uh, bankruptcy protection. David worked six years at the Highland Mine. He doesn't want to show his face out of fears of being blacklisted from future coal jobs, jobs that pay $27 an hour. State records show Highland miners extracted an average of 3.6 million tons of coal each year over the last decade from Henderson County's land. That tax revenue shared with Union County, where Highland's entrance is located. With that income no longer there, the fiscal court slashed funding from a gamut of services, including volunteer fire departments and enacted two months of furlough days over the summer. You talk about hurting somebody. And I mean, it hurt, hurt me that I took money away from people. Henderson County considering a 1% occupational tax, a half percent already passed in Hopkins County. Judge Executive Donnie Carroll says they've also slashed one million dollars from the budget and agreed retiring employees won't be replaced. Cole Severance, he says, down one hundred and fifty thousand dollars last quarter. We respect the counties first and foremost. You know, they're being very responsible. They're dealing with their budget issues and things like that. But uh, I always struggle when I hear what's due to call, falling severance tax dollars when we're still generating $27 million alone in severance tax in Hopkins County through our operations. And uh, I know they only get a small percentage of that back, but they get something back. Hopkins County preparing for even less funding. Alliance Energy announced it's closing the Elk Creek mine early next year, laying off more than 300 workers. 
State records show Elk Creek produced almost 3 million tons of coal in 2014, contributing to the $2.6 million received in coal severance, a figure likely to drop as Elk Creek extracted 37 percent of Hopkins County's coal. Right now the coal market is very depressed. Um, especially with the uh, generation of this type of coal, which is generally steam coal for making electric power. China has put a lot of uh, materials on the market at a low cost, which causes recycling of steel and aluminum. The uh, amount of electricity that is used is down. So, uh, the, therefore, the price of coal has gone down. And, uh, uh, the market is, will only take what it can bear at this point. Obviously, what's going on in Washington, uh, the clean power plan, all the regulatory uh, pressures that we're facing, these are all having an impact on the marketplace. The EPA requiring Kentucky to reduce carbon emissions 31 percent by 2030, based on measurements from 2012. A costly feat for coal companies compounded by competition from natural gas, which according to the EPA produces half the carbon dioxide. In Muhlenberg County, TVA building a natural gas facility at its Paradise plant set to eventually replace its coal-fired units. A big change for a county rich in coal culture. And Daddy, won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County, down by the Green River, where paradise lay. State records show Muhlenberg County pulled in 3.6 million tons of coal last year, down 28 percent from 2010, yet up 43 percent from 10 years ago. Production relatively consistent in Webster County, the coal scene on the rise in Ohio County. 8.3 million tons produced in 2014, twice what it was five years prior, obliterating figures from 2005. Western Kentucky's strongest coal producer, Union County. 2010, it doubled production from the year before with 10.3 million tons of coal and has grown from there. 2016 set to be stronger as Alliance announced its increasing production at its Riverview mine. Welcome news as it took a hit not only from the Highland Mine's 2014 closure, but Dodge Hill too. I believe at some point in the future that they will mine the reserves that are remaining in Henderson County uh, that are underground uh, retrievable. I don't believe that we can leave a non-renewable natural resource such as coal uh, in the ground uh, and not be used. County engineer Bill Hubiak thinks there's 10 to 15 years of coal left at the Highland Mine and finds this fence on US 60 near Cordon a glimmer of hope. It's guarding a ventilation shaft Patriot installed just two years ago, signaling miners may work underground here once again. Will it come back? I certainly hope so, but if it does, this county can never, ever be as dependent upon coal severance as it's been in the past. Davis and McLean counties were not included in this report as they typically produce a few hundred thousand tons of coal a year. That's a fraction of what's produced in the six other counties mentioned. An Alliance coal spokesperson tells me he thinks the future of coal is in southern Illinois, where there's a 250-year supply. Illinois does not have a coal severance tax, and neither does Indiana.